Are you ready for some more one pan meals? Quick, easy, simple, and quick cleanup to go with it. Hey friends, my name's Susan, and welcome to my home. Today I've got you four quick and easy one pan meals. Quick, easy, simple, and quick cleanup to go with it. So, come on, let's get our ponytails up, and let's get to making some one pan meals that'll make it quick and easy on the cleanup too. So come on, let's get to cooking. Last week I made some dirty rice with ground beef. This week I'm gonna be making some one pot chicken and dirty rice. But it's gonna have some posca kielbasa, some chicken. I've got some of my chicken bone broth. I've got some slap your mama and some zatarange creole. Of course my shortcut, a box of dirty rice. I have a little bit of celery and some onion. I didn't have any bell peppers ready to roll from the garden yet, so this is what I'm working with. We're going to make this hopefully quick work and have an amazing supper in no time at all. So let's get to putting everything in the pot. First thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And then I'm going to add in my onion and my celery. If I had bell pepper, I'd put it in now, but I'm not, I don't. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cook down just a little bit to get our roux started. And this will smell amazing once it gets going. And now that that uh, seasoning is starting to get nice and brown, I'm gonna go ahead and add in all the chicken that I had. And let it go, it will take a little bit longer than the Posca. But it's already smelling amazing in here. And this won't take long. I did cut the chicken. I've got about five thighs that are uh, skinless and boneless. And I cut them into small pieces. That way they'll be easy to eat whenever this is all finished getting made. I'm going to go ahead and let this brown up just a little bit. And then we'll add the next item. While this is cooking up a little bit. I am going to add a little bit of Slap Your Mama to the top of this and a little bit of the Zatarain's Creole. I just love that flavor combination. There's just something awesome about it. Didn't put a whole lot in here, but put a little bit, because I know that that box of dirty rice is gonna have a lot of good flavor in it. And this is just about ready for me to add the Posca Kielbasa to. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Now. We've got a pot full of goodness in here. I have made jambalaya many a time kind of like this, but the dirty rice is a little different flavor, and I love it. <clears throat> now that this is all in the pot, I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. And I'm going to go ahead and add in the box of goodness. This is, I believe, Aldi's version of dirty rice. I love it. I mean, it tastes really good, and it's nice and inexpensive. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the flavor packet that's in the box first. So let it get in there good. And then the rice in there. I'm going to mix it around just a little bit. And then I'm going to add in the chicken broth. The package says water. The recipe says chicken broth. You know I'm going with the chicken broth because that will instill a whole lot of awesome flavor. And this is actually still a little bit frozen. But that is okay because it will melt really quick with all this nice hot food. Um, I make my bone broth, or the chicken bone broth that you're seeing right here. Uh, once I have two chicken carcasses and I put it in the crock pot and let it cook all night. And then in the morning, I've got bone broth. So now this is ready to come up the temp, and I'll bring you back when it does. It is now boiling nicely. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on, and it calls for about 25 minutes. So I'm going to turn this on about a 2 or a medium low for 25 minutes, and then I'll bring you back, and we'll see what kind of goodness awaits in this pot. And 25 minutes later, this is what it's looking like. It looks absolutely amazing. 
Smells absolutely amazing. And it's time to get this in a bowl. And here you go. It smells amazing. I can only imagine how good it's gonna taste. This was so good. It didn't need the additional salt. That packet was well salty enough. That Slap Your Mama and Zatarans was the bomb. Well, it's time to make a little bit of Mexican food. I'm gonna make something kind of like a one pan sour cream chicken enchilada skillet, but I'm not gonna use the tortillas. I'm gonna actually put some penne pasta in it and we'll see how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything in line so I can work on getting it all in the pan. One pan, that makes it good. I've got some Fiesta Blend cheese. It does call for a different cheese, but y'all know that's the cheese I love. Some sour cream. I've got some Chipotle chili spice. A little bit of oregano. I've got some green chilies in the can. Some chicken broth, butter, all-purpose flour, penne pasta, of course, and two chicken breasts that I've defrosted. I've got four tablespoons of butter in the pan. So let's get this warming up so we can start the recipe. And I've went ahead and let the butter melt down. I'm gonna go ahead and add the all-purpose flour in and I'm gonna let this cook down on just a little bit. I have this on about a medium right now. And I'm gonna let this all melt into the butter so it will cook the flour so you don't have that raw taste whenever you go to make the rest of the recipe. So this won't take but a second. I'm also gonna go ahead and add in, this is the chili powder, oregano, and salt. I'll go ahead and add that into it. Make sure all of it's good and in there. And that is very fragrant, I'll tell you what. And I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. If you are enjoying it, please press that little button down below and subscribe. Don't forget to press that little bell and the all notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Now that this is cooked for a little bit, it's time to go ahead and add in the green chilies, just a can of green chilies into this mix. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all melted into that because this makes it taste really good. And of course gets it smelling really good in the house too because you know, <clears throat> nothing bad with some good Spanish food or Mexican food, either way. Now that this is going, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chicken broth. And I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. I don't feel like it's hot enough. And that chicken broth is cold because I need this to start boiling a little bit is what I'm needing. And I changed pots. I felt like I needed a pan or excuse me, a pot more than a pan for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the chicken. I did cut it up. The recipe didn't say to, but I felt like it would be better if it marinated in the juice and all the good stuff in there. So I've got all that in. And now the Water is starting to boil. I'm going to add about a good cup full of noodles in. I think that should be enough. You know, if you have a larger family, you can add more. You can add more water to it if you want to. I know that these noodles do um, enlarge, and I'm notorious for putting too many noodles in. So I'm trying to do a nice heavy cup full this time to see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and let this boil. Turn it on low and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna add the next ingredients. So let's get this a going. And I'll bring you back whenever I add more. And I've actually let this cook about 20 minutes. And look, the noodles, I probably could have added more than a cup. You could probably have added about a cup and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the sour cream into the mixture. It does call for a cup of sour cream. Go ahead and put that in. I'm gonna go ahead and let that melt in. This part of the recipe, it says to take the chicken out and shred it. I cut it in small pieces. 
If you wanted to use a rotisserie chicken, you could do that. And now put the chicken in, in this portion. Now that I've got the sour, the, uh, sour cream all mixed in, I'm going to go ahead and add in two cups of the Mexican cheese. It does call for Colby Jack. I like Mexican. It just has that good flavor we love. I'm going to go ahead and let this melt down. Give it about five minutes to firm up. And then it'll be time to eat the sour cream enchilada chicken. I could have definitely added a few more noodles into this, but this flavor was so good. We enjoyed it thoroughly. This is a great meal, and of course, an easy one. And let's make some skillet lasagna. I have got some garlic powder, some onion powder, a little bit of cottage cheese instead of ricotta, I've got some traditional spaghetti sauce. I'm using rigatoni instead of the bow tie. I don't care for bow tie. I do like rigatoni and penne. We're trying that. Got a little Italian seasoning. Some basil of my dried basil. My basil plant's not doing too good this year, guys. Normally, my basil plant is humongous. It's not, and I don't know what is wrong with it. So I'm using my dried. We've got a little bit of all-purpose flour, some Parmesan, some mozzarella cheese, and an onion to go on this. I think I need one egg, and I think that's all I need other than a little salt and pepper. So, oh, and two cups of water. So let me go ahead and get the hamburger meat browning in the skillet, and then I'll bring you back for what comes next. So I have the hamburger starting in the pan. I'm going to go ahead and add in the onions. I know somebody asked me why I didn't add them in at the beginning, and I normally don't, but I'll try and see. I usually like to add them in once it browns a little bit so all the onion flavor doesn't go down with the grease when you pour it out. I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of onion powder, I'm going in right now, and one teaspoon of garlic powder is going in next. That seems like a lot, but that's correct, okay. We've got that put in. It's time to let this brown up and let the onions get opaque, and then I will Drain off all the grease, and then it'll be time to add some more goodies to this mix. So let's get a cooking, and I'll bring you back when we get to that point. Now that this is ready, I'm going to go ahead and put in my 24 ounces of pasta sauce. Right there. My two cups of water, which I am going to pour into the pasta container. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pour it into the pasta container. And then shake it around a little bit because that's exactly how much is in there. It's two cups. And I'm going to shake it real good and use every bit of that goodness that's in there because that would make pasta good. There we go. And it cleans it out nicely. I do have a little extra in there. Okay. Now it calls for 12 ounces of pasta. I am going to put in about half a box. 16 ounces, a little over half a box. So this is rigatoni, not bow tie. I'm going to fill it up until I think it's good and I've got pasta in it. Because once the water hits it and it starts absorbing, it's going to take up a lot of that water. And it's going to take up a whole lot of room in this container. So, you know, normally I put too much in, but who knows? Last night I put too little. So, we shall see. I could use a little bit more right there. Let's see a couple holes where I could use some more of those. And there we go. All right. Now, I've got all of this into the container or into the pan. I'm going to turn this on high, let it boil, turn it on low, and cover it. And we're going to let it simmer for about 17 minutes or so. So, let me get this boiling, covered, and simmering and I'll bring you back when we go to add the next step and this is what it's looking like so far look at that rigatoni it popped up so nice I've got it on low let's get what's gonna go on top of this baby put together and let's go ahead and get the topping mix made I'm gonna go ahead and put a half a cup of cottage cheese or you can use ricotta but I love cottage cheese it works just as well I'm gonna get one egg put into the mix 
two tablespoons of all-purpose flours going in, and a teaspoon of onion powder, and another teaspoon of garlic powder is going in. I am going to sprinkle on a little bit of Italian seasoning, just because I want to. And then it does call for fresh basil. I told you I don't have any good fresh basil. So I'm going to put a little bit of my dried basil in the mix. Not a lot, because it is very, very fragrant. I mean, it smells like the fresh basil outside is so good. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And about half a cup of Parmesan cheese, which I am going to just kind of eyeball it. I think that's probably about right. And I'm going to get this mixed up real good. That way it makes kind of a paste to some degree. Now let's get this added to the top of the pasta. And I'm just basically going to put this in dollops around on the pasta. I could use my hands and just shimmy it around, which is what I normally do with the um, lasagna I make. But I don't want to get my hands dirty today. I'm just in one of those moods. So it's going to be a spoon, and then I'll smear it around because you want it to stay on top. That way you've got that good cheese pull kind of thing going on, which I'm going to put some um, mozzarella cheese on top of this. You all know that's the way I roll with the lasagna. Try to, try to smooth it out a little bit. See if I can smear it around. Now I want a cheese pull. So I have got some mozzarella cheese I'm also going to put on top of this. Sprinkle this all around, which I'm getting it everywhere, but that's okay. I'll clean it up later. Because I like a good cheese pull. And whenever I make my homemade lasagna, I like a good cheese pull in it. I'm about done. I don't get the edges. It's fine. I'm going to put the lid on this and let this cook for about five minutes just to melt the cheese. I've got it on about a two. So let's get this going and I'll bring you back when I get ready to plate it. And here's what it looks like whenever it's done. Look at that. Beautiful, bubbly, and time to put it on a plate. So let's get it plated up. Guys, this was so good. I love my homemade lasagna, and this is the next best thing. Lasagna, but in a pan. Danny went back for seconds. Y'all know that is a trick to tell you it is amazing. Y'all have got to try it. Let's make some hamburger steak and onion and gravy. I have got some Worcestershire breadcrumbs, which all I had was Italian, so that's what I'm going to be using. Small purpose flour, an egg, pound of hamburger, it calls for a pound and a half, I'm just using a pound, it's just Danny and I. Got some onion, got some ready rice, I'm going to put it on. Kinder's steak blend, because this was so good in last week's recipe. Got a little bit of thyme, I'm going to put in it. I've got some beef broth and some milk, and I believe that's all I need other than a little salt and pepper back there. But let's go ahead and get everything mixed up and get it going into the pan. I have got the pound of ground beef. It does call for a pound and a half. I'm only using a pound. I'm going to put a little bit of my Tenders steak blend in it since it was so good last week in the cheeseburger quesadilla that I made. This also calls for one egg. Which I'm going to mix up in it. Ooh, it smells good with that tenders and I'm gonna have to put a little bit more in it. It smells good. I'm gonna add in half a cup of breadcrumbs to the mix and a little bit of milk. Now let me go ahead and get this all mixed up. Let me get my holder here. Get this all mixed up and form some patties. This should make about four patties, which is about correct. I did, like I said, have the Italian breadcrumbs because that's all I had. And those will be good. So this is ready to form, and then we'll get it in the pan. And I have got the oven on a medium. 
I'm going to go ahead and let these brown up on medium, and then I'm going to take them out of the pan. And I'll bring you back whenever I start the next process of this quick and easy meal. And I've let it brown up, and somebody right there, right there he is, is smelling how good this is smelling. And it smells amazing, guys. Look at that. I don't know if you can see how nice and brown these are already. It's about time to take them off and put them on a the plate, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and add in all the onions into this pan so they can go ahead and start getting opaque and saute just a little bit. And I went ahead and let this saute down to it's almost opaque. Not didn't take but like two or three minutes. Didn't take long. I'm going to go ahead and add in the flour. It's time to make a roux. And this is going in with all the luscious drippings from the beef and the onions. And this is going to cook down for maybe just about a minute. And then we're going to get busy with the rest of the ingredients. Now that this is absorbed into the gravy, I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of the broth at a time. And just let it mix around. This may take just a few seconds to get this all done. But you can see it's going to make a little gravy if you do it in little bits. Don't pour it all in at one time. Although it probably would work okay at all at one time, but still, this is the way you do it. Now, as you can see, I'm getting my spatula on the bottom of the pan and getting all of those little tidbits off the bottom of it. I'm basically deglazing the pan with the uh, beef broth that I'm putting in. Each time I put it in, and it's just making it easier to add the next bunch, and it keeps getting thicker each time I put some in, I just let it simmer for a minute and then add a little bit more. It's real simple, real easy, and we'll have some goodness whenever I get done. All right, now it's boiling and it's thickening up. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some Worcestershire sauce, which is what it calls for. It calls for a teaspoon, I'm gonna put some in. And I'm also gonna add a little bit more of this Kinder's steak seasoning. It was so good the other day. I just, I can't not eat, put it in. Not a lot, just a little bit. It does call for salt and pepper. And I am antsy about adding extra salt. Just because I'll add it at the end once I taste it if I need it. And that's what y'all need to do too. Because that's, you know, what makes it good. It's time to put the burgers or the steaks, hamburger steaks back in to this. I put it into all of the goodness. I have rotated it around one time. I'm gonna let this simmer on low for 15 minutes and then it's time to eat. This will probably be nice and brown and more gravified than it already is. But I guarantee this is gonna be good. It smells amazing already. This had such a great flavor and quick and easy and a quick cleanup to beat. It was so good. I really enjoyed it and you will too. Let me tell you, there are some winners in the recipes this week. That skillet lasagna was so good. I mean, when Danny goes back for seconds and he wants a full plate again, you know it's good. And if you haven't already, go ahead and press that little button down below and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell and press the all notification. That way you'll get a notification each time I put a video up. And until next time, see you then.